Hi, how's it going? Today I'm gonna show you how I made this universal and extremely ergonomic RC transmitter. It is based on the NRF 24L01 Plus module, which is probably the most popular transceiver at the moment. It has all the bells and whistles you can think of and costs less than 4 bucks. What more could you ask for? In the previous episode I designed the casing with modeling clay, scanned it using photogrammetry, imported the mesh file into Fusion 360 and converted it to a solid. In this video I'm gonna show you the rest of this project. And as always, all the files you can find on my website. Link in the description. Proceeding where I left off in the last video. I started by making a hole inside this model. It can be done in a several ways. But I copied it, made it smaller and put it, more and less, in the middle. Then I split the body and removed the inside. Maybe it's not the most elegant way, but it's fast and sufficient. Then I cut the model in half for easy access to the interior. After all, I somehow have to put all the components inside. And I don't have as much skill and patience as these guys who build ships models in the bottles. The next step was to prepare the trigger. To do so, I did a cutout in front of the case and then... The rest of the modeling process took a long, long time. It was full of ups and downs, trials and errors, joys and sorrows. I'll spare you all of that and speed up this part. You're welcome. Now, the part I love Fusion 360 for so much. In the project I got to the stage where I needed to place the PCB. I didn't have to define the shape elsewhere and then redraw it here. I could have done the exact opposite. I drew the outline I needed here and then generated a PCB model with a couple of mouse clicks. Now, I could create a new electronic design and link the generated PCB shape with the actual PCB. From now on, all the PCB changes will be visible on the 3D model on the fly. And that's exactly why Fusion is called Fusion. Of course, when I was designing it, I had to go back and forth all the time. From 3D model to schematic, from schematic to PCB layout, and from PCB layout to 3D model again. But for the sake of this video, let's assume that I did everything right the first time. Which never happened and never will in real life. I sent the finished PCB design a Gerber files to the JLC PCB, who happens to be a sponsor of this video, and I'm very grateful for that. I've been using their services for a long time, long before they wanted to sponsor me, and I couldn't recommend them more. The quality of the boards has always been excellent. That PCB and the all previous ones here on my channel are made by them, so you can go back to the older videos and see it for yourself. I've put link to their website in the description. Thanks, JLCPCB!
Of course I wouldn't be myself if I hadn't made a few stupid mistakes. And since I try to make my videos a bit educational, let's talk about them. The main power switch is connected the other way around. I use the normally open pin instead of the normally closed one. Luckily, clippers and the wire save the day. The rear potentiometer doesn't have enough clearance to be soldered and I had to use a Dremel to adjust it. And the biggest mistake of all, I forgot to lead the connectors for the programmer. That's why I had to solder the wires directly to the microcontroller. Of course, the PCB files you can download on my website are already fixed, so it'll work right out of the box. And yes, I know that the NRF24 module is in the middle of the PCB. What's more, the antenna is close to the copper and the other metal parts. I'm also aware this will limit the range, but that was never my priority. Besides, I can use a model with an external antenna instead to improve the range if I need. But in my case, I want to keep the RC receiver close, so I decided to give this setup a go. Ok, but what's the actual range, you ask? It's a great question and I'm gonna test it, as soon as I assemble the whole thing and write the firmware for the microcontroller. So don't go anywhere. After soldering the PCB I printed the housing and put it all together. This is a good time to talk about the project in general, present the overall concept. The main brain of my transmitter is STM32L151. It has all the peripherals I need for this project and easy to solder LQFP48 package. And it belongs to my favorite family of the microcontrollers. The trigger, my greatest pride. It has two functions. The first one is to turn the power on and off. When I release it, the power will be cut off and thus communication with the receiver will be interrupted. It's a safety feature. When the transmitter drops out of my hand, from any reason, the receiver will stop the device immediately. The second function is to getting information on how hard I press it. It's connected to a gear that turns the potentiometer depending on the position of the trigger, and I'm gonna use it as an accelerator. There is an additional knob at the bottom of the device to set the maximum speed of the vehicle. In here I put two buttons and RGB LED for any use. I don't know what I'm gonna use them for yet, but I'll come up with something for sure. Their functions will depend on the receiver's device itself. When the hardware is complete, usually the next step is to deal with the software. I wrote the whole project in STM32 Cube IDE. It's powerful and completely free. And that's why it is my default environment for the STM32 projects. On my website is an article on how to start with STM32 where I talk more about this IDE. It's complete tutorial on how to start with that family of microcontrollers. If you already know Arduino, learning about STM will be a piece of cake for you. To develop the radio communication I had to make temporary receiver with another NRF module. Luckily I have a number of STM nucleo evaluation boards littered in my drawers. The code itself is pretty simple. Its function is to send the current positions of all analog and digital channels every 50 milliseconds. What use will be made of this information is up to receiver. Currently the receiver doesn't do anything useful. It just sends a confirmation that the data has arrived. I've described more detail about the code on my website, so I invite all the geeks like me out there. And now I was finally able to check the actual range of the transmitter. Let's go out. To perform the test I used. Transmitter receiver, power source, and a measuring tape. The transmitter has an LED that is green when communication goes OK, like this. 
or red if the receiver isn't responding. The test procedure is straightforward. I'm gonna move away from the receiver and check when the LED changes the color to red. Let's go! The result was around 22 meters or 72 feet, and falling beyond this value is quite risky. Ok, but the color changing LED isn't very impressive, so let's go back to my shop and check how it really works. A Nucleo board, aka receiver, is connected to the PC via USB cable, and its only job will be to receive the data and display it on a nice looking chart. The transmitter will simply send the position of all knobs, buttons and joystick via radio. So, let's check how it works. Thank you everybody for watching, if you haven't already hit the like and subscribe button and we see each other in the next video.